rights your member of Congress. They're trying to take our freedom away to choose the kind of dietary supplement that we wish to consume. And this wasn't a, uh, <clears throat> you know, a large pharmaceutical campaign or even a large uh, food industry campaign. This was grassroots. And Jim Tozzi will tell you there is nothing in this country as effective as a grassroots campaign. So what did they do? One of the things they did was to get those letters to Congress. In 1993 and 1994, there were more letters to Congress about the right to take dietary supplements than about war, peace, the budget, right to life, or any other subject. It was extraordinary. The second thing they did is, please recall, 1994 was the year that the Republicans took over the House and Senate for the first time in 40 years. And so what the dietary supplement industry did was to line up their members, find out who would be in favor of a new law for dietary supplements, who would not support it, and if anybody running for office who would not support it, there was a member of the industry in every single speech so that they would be heckled and the audience would find out that they did not support any type of new legislation. About a month before the election in the fall of 1994, the two principal opponents of any new legislation, Henry Waxman of California and Teddy Kennedy, uh, in the Senate of Massachusetts called the industry and said, we give up. Let's sit down and write a law. And that led to the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 1994. Now, the enactment of a law, as Jim Tosi said, doesn't mean all issues are over. New issues arise. But without that law, there would have been no protection for dietary supplements. And my uh, colleagues are now going to describe, Tony Young will describe how that law has been implemented by FDA since then. Another interesting aspect of the movement leading to Duche, which also has echoes in the mar marijuana legalization movement, is the bipartisan nature of some of the support that uh, the dietary supplement uh, industry received. For example, on one hand, Warren Hatch was a big supporter of Duche. On the other hand, Tom Hartman and Bill Richardson were also. So this is, uh, I think, an interesting characteristic. So Tony Young is going to be describing to us uh, the inflammation of uh, the inflammation, the implementation <laughs> of the uh, um, Tony uh, is a very esteemed lawyer at the uh, great food and drug focused law firm of Kleinfeld, Kaplan, and Becker, where he's been since 2003. He represents food, drug, and dietary supplement. Uh, manufacturers, and he currently serves as general counsel to the American Herbal Products Association. Tony. Thank you. Um, just a footnote on how politics works. Duche was coming up uh, before the Senate, and Howard, uh, I think it was Howard Metzenbaum, was the uh, congressman from Ohio, a consumer advocate, someone who you would, uh, would have seen as someone against uh, dietary supplements. Um, and uh, he had a block on the bill. And the bill was released by Metzenbaum uh, when Senator Hatch released a hold on two court of appeals judgeships uh, that were uh, judges uh, from uh, Ohio to the court of appeals. So that's how power, uh, politics works. Metzenbaum went on to become head of the Consumer Federation uh, of America.
America. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the regulated industry. Uh, regulation is tough. Uh, Lyle, if you ever get that uh, license to grow marijuana and use it, you, like it was Khan down at the University of Mississippi, will be able to spend half your time filling out paperwork for the DEA. Uh, I met with DEA in Oxford once. And uh, at the end of the meeting, I said, do you know Nicholas Kahn? And they said, do we know Nicholas? He provides us with more paper to review than anyone else. So under the cliche, herbs and botanicals were written into the law specifically as a form of dietary ingredient, along with vitamins, minerals, various other items, amino acids in particular, because FDA in that 19, uh, in that 1993 attack singled out botanicals, singled out amino acids, so they carefully were placed into the statute. So FDA then had to implement these uh, regulations uh, or the statute. The first thing they did was establish uh, supplement facts, uh, identity, and nomenclature regulations. Well, what does that mean? It means you, on a supplement facts uh, uh, panel, you will see the various nutrients and the various ingredients uh, that are in the supplement in a very uniform presentation, in a uniform amount, based on the serving size determined by the company. They established requirements for botanical names and that the part of the plant of the botanical be uh, listed. Very important so that people can understand what the botanical is that they're getting and whether the part of the plant of the botanical, for those who know enough, is the part of the plant that is expected to have uh, to do something uh, for you. And the name of the dietary supplement has to be named, either dietary supplement, botanical supplement, vitamin supplement, again, to identify what these things are. And that's very important. Think about that in the context of, of the products uh, that you're looking at. It allows product comparisons uh, to be made by medical professionals and consumers through standardized terminology. It's allowed strength and potency of products to be compared. Uh, and it requires also labeling of other ingredients in the product, something very important. Consumers want to know, well, what else have you, what else have you used in here? Um, FDA then, in the next round, uh, established claims or uh, established regulations for structure function claims for dietary supplements. Prior to the shade, you really couldn't make a structure function claim for a food product. Remember, everything was a food before, unless that claim arose out of the nutrient value of the uh, of the ingredient and. Botanicals were not thought to have any kind of nutrient value. That's a very defined term uh, in the law. And so we didn't get many claims at all out of the prior law. So Duché allows us to describe how a botanical is intended to affect the structure or function of the body. And that is a huge allowance for botanicals because that is what they do. That is what many things do on their way to being drugs but we only get to go on the highway, we don't get to go to the end point of drug or disease. That's precluded for dietary supplements. So FDA proposed a bunch of regulations and discussed what kinds of claims could be made for supplements. Uh, they expanded the definition of disease. Remember, under Duché, you can't make a disease claim, so they made that universal larger so that you couldn't, couldn't go there. They said that many common conditions of health are diseases. Uh, they said there's no structure function claim allowed where there is an over-the-counter uh, drug claim, either regulated or prohibited in the OTC drug regulations. They said no disease markers uh, like high cholesterol, no implied claims, and no reference to published articles of, about disease. So they started off giving us a very narrow window for structure function claims. The industry then files comments on the proposed regulations as part of the regulatory process. And at the end of the day, FDA agreed that common 
health conditions are not diseases. That would be dementias, uh, menopause, uh, and, and other common uh, conditions. Pain after exercise, after strenuous exercise, but not arthritis pain. They allowed many OTC claims as structure function claims. We basically gave them a list of the claims that had been prohibited or allowed for OTC drugs, and we said, we think these are structure function claims. I think we gave them 60, we got about 40. That was pretty good, because these were all drug claims, many of them not allowed for OTC drugs, because there had been no demonstration of safety and efficacy in the drug context. But now we're allowed to make claims, and the category that grew the largest out of this is aphrodisiac products. Um, well, you got to start somewhere, I guess. Uh, and why not start at the beginning? Uh, so, <laughs> Nutrient-based uh, uh, claims uh, must bear these claims, must bear disclaimers. No implied claims, no disease markers. They didn't, they didn't give us those. Um, they, as I said, they gave us many uh, claims, including uh, 